Uh, welcome to Bethesda, and uh, if you would stand, if you're able, and turn to 885 for the modern affirmation of faith. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power in, in love, whose mercy is over all his works, and who We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God, Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the grounds of our hope, and the promise of deliverance from sins. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the true Christ, and find strength and help in time of need. We believe this, this faith should manifest it in service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end, the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. The scriptures, the Old Testament scripture today comes from Genesis 17, 1 through 7, 15 and 16. And when Aram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said to him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. I will make my covenant between me and thee and with multiply thee exceedingly. And Aram fell on his face and God talked to him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but it will be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and the king shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, and their generations for everlasting covenant, to be a a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And God said to Abraham, As for Sarah, thy wife, thou shalt not call her Sarah, but Sarah shall be her name, and I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she, be, she shall be the mother of nations, and kings of people shall be in her. This is the word of God for the people of God. God. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also you. All of you who braved the ice storm this morning. So glad that you have come. It's good to see those that are uh, willing to come out. I think there's quite a few that decided that they would uh, uh, stay home this morning uh, due to the forecast of ice. But, uh, but anyway, we're so glad that you have made your way to come so let us go now to the cross, and I invite you to pray for yourself during our time of silence. O oh Lord, our all-powerful, 
all-forgiving and all-loving God. We come to you this morning lifting up our voices and lifting up our hearts in praise to you. Lord, we thank you for being a God who cares for us and loves us in the way that you do. We thank you, O Lord, that you're a God who allows us to come to you in prayer. A God who hears our prayer and answers. Lord, we thank you for all these things. We thank you for this day that we have been given. We thank you for this church and this place where we can come and gather together. Lord, I thank you for each person that is here this morning. Lord, we have come here this morning with great anticipation of embracing your spirit. And Lord, we just pray to you this morning that you would pour out your spirit upon us. Lord, that we might know that we have been in your presence this day. And that, Lord, we will leave from here knowing that we are indeed your children. And that you have empowered us, that we might have opportunities to share our stories. Lord, that we might touch the lives of others. But, Lord, as your people, as we lift up our voices in praise to you, as we recount our blessings, we are a people who are in need. Lord, we are human beings who suffer from many types of ailments and sickness, pain, grief, and loneliness. Lord, you can look into the hearts of your people and you know their unspoken needs and unspoken requests. And I pray, O Lord, that you will touch each and every one. But Lord, we also want to lift up those who were mentioned specifically by name. We pray for Jesse Philbeck and Dixie Forbes, Jerry Hoffman, for Zach Philbeck. Pray for Joe's sister, Ann Gabriel, for John and Madeline, for Michelle Green and for Linda and all of their family, and especially for those two young children, for Beverly Mitchell. For Nell McLean, for Cecilia, and for this church. Lord, there are so many needs. But Lord, they, we call upon you because you're a big God who can handle these things. And Lord, we just ask that you guide us in the way that you would have us to go. We pray for our first responders, our police, our firemen, our medics. We pray for our president, for all of his aides, and the politicians, and especially for the men and women in the military, both here at home and abroad, for their families. And Lord, we pray for peace. Lord, we live in a world where there is so much unrest, so much chaos, so much hatred, so much war. We pray for a time when Men will live in harmony with one another. There will be no need for armies and for weapons. But Lord, we will be a time that we will celebrate and rejoice in the blessings of our God. Lord, we also pray this morning a special prayer for those who do not know you. Those that are unchurched. Those that have rejected the church. Lord, we pray that you will use us here, here at Bethesda, that we might be your hands and your feet. Lord, that we would have doors and windows of opportunity to share the good things that you have done for us. Lord, that we might express the love that you have for us and for all of mankind. Lord, we thank you for all these things that you do for us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that empowers us, fill our hearts to overflowing, that it might spill out upon others. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you to to please stand if you're able and let let us recite the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray so many years ago. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. This day, our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. How many of you have your Bibles with you this morning? Amen. Amen. That looks good. See so many Bibles here. If you have them open to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, Mark 8. I'll begin reading with verse 31 and go through verse 38. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Then Jesus began to tell them that he, the Son of Man, would suffer many terrible things and be rejected by the leaders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed and three days later would rise again. As he talked about this openly with his disciples, Peter took him aside and told him he shouldn't say things like that. Jesus turned and looked at his disciples and then said to Peter very sternly, Get away from me, Satan. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's point of view. Then he called his disciples and the crowds to come over and to listen. If any of you wants to be my follower, he told them, you must put aside your selfish ambitions, shoulder your cross, and follow me. <coughs> Excuse me. If you try to keep your life for yourself, you will lose it. But if you give it up, your life, for my sake, for the sake of God, you will find it. And how do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul. Is anything worth more than your soul? If a person is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, I, the Son of Man, will be ashamed of that person when I return in glory with my Father and the holy angels. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, Jesus was putting it on them today, wasn't he? As I listen to his words, I think about how many times we've been rejected by Christ. Just like Peter was rejected. You know, Jesus didn't let up either. He continued to, to talk to them in a stern voice. But I began to think about this sermon and, and the passage and this passage of Scripture that Jesus was talking to his disciples. And you know, you really can't blame Peter for what he said. Because Peter, I think, was he was justified in saying what he said to Jesus. You see, all of Peter's life as a Jewish boy, he had been raised to, to be looking for the Messiah. To look for someone to come in and redeem Israel. To redeem the Jewish nation. To make them strong once again like in the days of David. They were looking for a Messiah to come in and overthrow the Roman government. And so here Peter was ready for that. He had been looking for that. And he had found the Messiah. He believed indeed that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. And when he starts talking about being taken advantage of and being beaten and then hung on a cross... I can understand where Peter says, wait a minute. No, we're not going to have that. That's not going to happen. This is not going to happen to our Messiah. You are going to lead us into a great nation. And Jesus says, wait a minute, Peter. You got it all wrong. That's what you want. That's what you're thinking. How many times do we do the same thing in our own life? How many times do we get it wrong? How many times do we pray to God that, Lord, this is the way I want it to do. This is the way I want it to work. You know, this is a good prayer. And we expect God to perform. Because we're praying and asking Him to do a great thing. 
We pray for somebody who's lost. And we keep praying and that doesn't happen and we don't understand why. We pray about our jobs, but yet our jobs fade away. We pray for our health. And sometimes our health continues to deteriorate. Or the health of a loved one. We pray for so many things and it just doesn't work out the way we want it to. But that's what Peter was doing. Peter was expressing what he wanted. How he wanted it to work. And Jesus said, no, that ain't how it's going to happen. I thought an awful lot about the Reinhardt family this week. And I thought, how many times have they prayed to God to heal their son? He was only 48 years old. Had a promising career. A beautiful family. And they prayed earnestly. And you know it's not God's will that someone be taken away at such an early age. But yet, that's not what happened. And so they question God. They may even be angry at God. Because, God, you could have stopped this. You didn't have to let this happen to Casey. And we do the same thing in our lives. We say, God, why is things not working out the way I want them to? Why is my relationship not the way I want it to be? Why don't I have that perfect job? Why don't I have the money I need? Why am I in so much debt? On and on and on it goes with everything that we pray about and what we want. We want it our way. But God has a different plan. And sometimes we fail to see that plan. And not only now did Jesus come on to Peter and tell him to straighten up and fly right, this is not the way that God sees things. And then he says, and now you need to deny yourself. And now you need to die for me. That's what it means. Pick up your cross and follow me. Denying oneself, that's something we don't like to do. We just don't like denying ourselves. We, we enjoy in this country a life of all of God's glorious gifts. We want comfort. We want ease. We want enjoyment. We want luxury. We want all these things in our lives because they're blessings from God, right? But God says that we need to deny ourselves. Denying ourselves is something that's very difficult to do. Especially when you don't have to. But he says that that's what we should do. You know, I'm a, I'm a junkie on, on news. I love to watch TV news. I watch CNN. I watch HLN. I watch MSNBC. I watch Fox News. And then I will go to the local news. And sometimes I will even record uh, Channel 3 and watch Channel 9 and go back and watch Channel 3 later. I'm, I'm obsessed with the news. I love the news. But anyway, I was watching 48 Hours the other night. And they had a story. And they had this story that really touched my heart. It was about two high school basketball teams. Did anybody see it? And it was about, it was men, it was boys basketball. And uh, for you that saw it, forgive having to listen to me explain it. But, but anyway, they had these two teams. And one of them was an up-and-coming uh, private school where the people were very affluent, uh, mostly white kids that were privileged. And then you had this other school. And, the, and, and all this was in Waco, Texas, by the way. And then you had the other school that was a school of juveniles that had committed felonies. And they were dangerous. They were dangerous individuals. So they didn't get to go out and play all the different teams. But if they had good behavior, done what they were supposed to do, and, and, and uh, kept out of trouble, they were allowed to play basketball. And twice a year... They got to leave the prison and go play other schools. Only twice a year. The rest of the time they had to play there inside their compound. And the guy that was doing the interview, he interviewed some of the guys and he said, well, 
He said, do you have any fans? Do people come and, and cheer for you? And he said, no. The guy said, not even your parents? He said, no, they don't have time for us. He said, so how many, how many people come? He said, zero. Nobody comes. Well, the kids at the other school, they found out that nobody was cheering for these boys in the, uh, in the detention, in juvenile detention. And so two of them stood up and said, if nobody's going to cheer for them, we're not going to play. We're just not going to play because it's not right that people should not have somebody cheering for them. And so they asked people to, to voluntarily cheer for the other team. Some of the, even some of the cheerleaders got little outfits with the, the Vikings on it and they cheered for this team. And those kids, when they come into that gym, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. People were cheering for them. And they played their hearts out. And they didn't tell us who won. But everybody won. Everybody won. They interviewed some of the kids after the game was over. And some of those kids that were in trouble, they'd done, they had felonies. They asked him, they said, well, what did you think of this game? He said, I'll never forget it. I'll remember this the rest of my life. All because a couple of kids denied themselves of being overwhelmed with, with fans. They wanted their fans to cheer for the other team. They even went on to say that before the game was over, everybody in the whole gym was cheering for the juveniles. Denying oneself of just a little bitty thing. Just a small thing. That's what God is calling us to do, is to deny ourselves. You know, I racked my brain out. I'm trying to think, uh, as I'm looking at the lectionary, I'm thinking, how does... Abraham and Sarah play into this, denying oneself. And so it was a blogger that I read, and, and they compared it to the fact because they were so old and they raised children at that age, they were denying themselves. Their life was comfortable. He was 99, she was 90 years old, but yet she, had, she bore children. And they raised children at that age. They denied themselves so that they could do what God had called them to do. I know of people in this church, in my own family, who are raising their kids' kids. Even great-grandkids, some of them are raising them. They are denying themselves and doing that because it needs to be done. And as a church, we need to support those families because they're denying. You know that... I'm 58 years old. I would hate to think that I'm going to raise a baby at this age and have to raise it. It would definitely be a, a, a real sacrifice. But if God called me to do it, that's what I would do. Denying oneself, picking up the cross, and following Him. So many times in our lives we don't think about denying ourselves. People in the grocery line, it's like a dog-eat-dog -dog world where they were gonna, they're going to get in front of you. I've seen people hit buggies together because they're trying to get in front of each other in the grocery store. You let, you let some bad weather come in and people will fight over the last loaf of bread so they can go home and make uh, milk sandwiches. But we don't see the need in so many parts of our lives where we need to deny ourselves. You know, Christ is not going to call any of us to be crucified on a cross. But there's crosses to be carried. There's sacrifices to be made. He told us that if we're ashamed of Him now, He'll be ashamed of us later. We can't afford to give up our souls. We must deny ourselves. And whatever it is that Christ is calling us to do, even the little things in life. Let us hear His voice, deny ourselves, pick up our crosses, and follow Him. It's not the popular thing to do. It's really not. When we sacrifice ourselves 
People look at us strange and say, what are you doing? That gives us a door of opportunity to share why we do the things that we do. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we hear your words today. And Lord, they're hard words. For we know that denying ourselves is not easy to do. But Lord, you set the perfect example through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, he could have had anything he wanted, but he denied himself. And now he invites us to follow him. Lord, may your Holy Spirit empower us this day that we can follow him in whatever ways he calls us out. Lord, help us to help others to deny ourselves of just sometimes the smallest things, a small act of kindness or a small gift. Lord, open our eyes that we can see the things that you call us to do. Lord, we pray that we're never ashamed of you and your son Jesus that we will always be ready and willing to proclaim the good news even when it's hard news. We thank you, O Lord, for these wonderful words where you have taught us to become the, the people that you have called us to be. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Who are you, Bethesda? And what do you deserve? I deserve to be loved and respected. And now what will you do? God's help, the world. Let's go forth from this place. Let's indeed proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. your path and share the journey. The people of the United Methodist Church.